everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This tutorial is for the Squoval bag by KMG Handmade. If you're wondering what a Squoval is, it's a squared off oval. So as you can see, the bottom is squared and we have the rounded top. This bag also has darts that help give it its shape and then it kind of makes it look like you have these box corners, but it gives darts, which is what helps give it that squared off look at the bottom. On the front of the bag, as you can see, we have this zipper pocket, so it opens and you have it on both sides. So you can put a phone if your phone's small enough to fit in there, or say some sunglasses, anything you want to kind of access quickly. It's a great pocket for featuring a really beautiful zipper pull. So maybe one of your custom zipper pulls or any zipper pull that you want to feature here, or even if you want to make a zipper pull, um, say make it with a tassel or something, it's really nice to have that front feature there as well. I also fussy cut my fabric so that the owl was in the center and then the zipper went up the center of the owl and I used an owl pull as well to tie it all together. On the back we have another pocket. This is a slip pocket that closes with a magnetic snap. Again you can put your phone in here or anything that you want, so your keys, because it's nice and close to your body. Then we have this crossbody strap and you can wear it crossbody or tighten it and you can wear this as a shoulder bag. I like having both the options, especially if I'm making this bag, say for somebody I don't know. I like to make it with a crossbody strap, then they can adjust it to have it how they want it. When we open the bag, as you can see, the zipper goes from one side to the other. That helps the bag open nice and wide. Almost looks like a mouth. It's kind of cute. Then when you look inside the bag, we have a zipper pocket. My zipper pocket here has this overlay that has the key minder attached to it. So there's a swivel hook right here that I can attach my keys to. There's two, op two options in this pattern for how to install the zipper pocket. So you may have done this one with the overlay or the other one that doesn't have the overlay and it's just the zipper pocket sewn into the material or right into your lining, sorry. And then your key minder will be attached to your lining as well. The key minder will be made the way we've made them in previous videos and previous patterns. On the other side, we have a slip pocket. So I've divided my slip pocket to have a pen pocket and then another slightly larger slip pocket. So for anything you want to put in your slip pocket that you don't want to lose in the bottom of your bag. And the bag is large enough for your wallet, your keys, anything you want to put in your bag for a day out or say you just want to go say to a coffee shop and you just want to have a really small bag with you and you just want to bring your essentials. This is really perfect for that. Um, this can be made in a variety of materials. So during testing, I made mine out of a vinyl. It has a bit of a fleece backing on it, so I didn't use any interfacing. It was a really beautiful bag. I love it in the, in the vinyl. You can really make this out of anything, cork, vinyl, faux leather, anything you really want. Just, you know your machine, so use the materials that are best for your machine, including your needles and your threads. So what works for my machine may not work for yours, so always use what works for your machine because you know your machine the best. It is nice because Kristen does have us keep the interfacing, if you choose to use interfacing, out of the seam allowance, which does help reduce the bulk, but you do have some areas that have bulk, such as right here where your zipper in the front meets the front panels and you have some bulk here too when we're sewing up these sides here so you do have to keep that in mind also you may notice that there's some rivets here i don't know if you can see it those are not part of the pattern it is optional well they're part of the pattern but it's optional it's not something that is actually meant to be done she does give it as an option and i ended up deciding to add them it just adds a little bit of bling and i also use rivets on my strap so it sort of ties it all together and Speaking of the strap again, it is double sided and I do show you how to do that. That is in the pattern. It's really nice. I love du double sided straps. I just like being able to feature the two fabrics and really make it pop. So that's the school bag, all the features of the school bag. So let's get started making our bag. So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. The reason for this is there's always lots of important information regarding say interfacing sometimes depending on how you're cutting things for the size of hardware you're using so there's always important information that the designer shares with us so that we can make the best decision when we're choosing our fabrics or our hardware etc so read through the entire pattern once you've read through the entire pattern you can then cut your pattern pieces out and then you can start cutting your pieces out of fabric with the choices you've made. So I've already gone ahead and cut out all my pattern pieces and cut everything out and I've prepped some things too. And by prepping I mean I've gone ahead with my key minder and I've cut the little opening for my zipper here. I've cut my zippers to length because I read through so I knew what length I needed them to be. I've also made markings for a magnetic snap 
And you'll also see here, I made center markings on my pattern pieces so I know where the center is. And also I've labeled it with the corresponding letter so that when I get to each step, I know what pattern piece to use. So I've done that. I've also prepped some of my pieces that need to be cut in half. So I've also done that. The other thing I've gone ahead and done was folded my strap connectors. So I've already gone ahead and folded them in half like this. So that's done already. However, when we get to that step in the pattern, I will show you how to do that as well as my straps. I've gone ahead and pressed those as well. And that's just so I don't have to go off camera and press them and then come back. It's less stopping and less moving around for me. Speaking of camera and going on and off camera, I do not show any pattern pieces. I don't give measurements. I don't show a ruler or my cutting mat here on my table. And that's just for the protection of the designer, but also because many times I'm filming these while the bags are still in testing. So sometimes things can change such as a measurement or a placement of a snap, things like that. So that just makes it so that my tutorial goes with the pattern no matter what the designer has written. And this way here, you just use the pattern as your guide as you're sewing along with me. So you will want to have it open either printed beside you on your computer or some other device. And then if you're using it on your computer and you wanna watch the video, have it open, then have the video screen opened, but minimize it so that you can still scroll through your pattern and still be able to watch the video tutorial. So once you have all your pattern pieces cut and ready to go, we can get sewing. The very first thing we're going to start with, just going to move this out of the way, is our crossbody strap. So as I mentioned previously in the beginning here, I mentioned that I've already folded mine and it's really very easy to fold your strap. And I do have a tutorial, by the way, on my YouTube channel for piecing together fabric if you don't have a long enough piece a fabric to make your strap. So I will link that below in the description. Always check the description of the video because I do share some extra little videos for some extra little helpful tips and tricks with you. So again, this is folded in half. So to do that, you'll have a piece that looks like this. You'll draw a line down the entire length of the strap in the center of the strap. And then you'll take each long edge and fold it into the center to meet and you'll press it all the way down the entire length of the strap. And you'll do that for both your exterior and your lining piece. Once you have it all pressed, we're ready to sew it together. And a little tip that I've never shared before and I thought I'd share now, and I had stopped doing it for a while, but I started doing it again, is when I'm pressing my straps, I like to spritz them a little bit. You can use steam with your iron if you do use steam. I don't use steam with my iron. I just have a water bottle always handy. So I just spritz this to get them a little bit damp and as I'm ironing, I press it, which dries it. And then that gives it a nice crisp press and I have these nice crisp pressed edges on my handle or straps or strap connectors. Anything that I'm pressing, I will spray it a little bit just to give it that nice crispness and you get that nice, if you, as you can see, crisp pressed edge. So once we have those all pressed, we need to sew these together. And this method is probably going to be a little bit different than what you're used to. So what you're going to do is take your exterior, open up the edges you just pressed, just like that. And you're going to place the lining also opened up so it is pretty sides touching. So both the exterior and lining are pretty sides touching. Clip it together. Once you have that clipped together, you're going to sew this short edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So it'll look just like that. Now I'm just going to finger press this open. Another thing you can use to help press it open is using a tool like this. So this is from my card making days, but you can use anything. You can use that. You can use your rolling. You can do that. You can take it to your iron and press it. Anything you want or just press it with your nails. That's what I often do. Anything you want to press that flat. And then once you have it pressed flat again, you're going to want to fold this in and just press those areas where you flattened the strap out. And another little extra tip. So this here, 
right here where we've pressed open, there's going to be quite a bit of bulk when we fold this in. And what ends up happening is you get little tails or little ears that stick out here. So I just snip that, careful not to snip my stitches or any other fabric. I just snip it at a V. So you can see I've snipped it out of V, just like that. And that way here, when I fold these back in, all that extra fabric isn't bunching up in the center here. And with making these straps, normally when I'm pressing, I don't press them so that these pieces touch because I end up folding them in half again and then you end up with all that bulk here in this fold. But with this style of strap, you can press it right into the center so both sides touch. But any other strap that I end up folding again, if you're folding it one more time in half to conceal all the raw edges, I will press it so that it is just a little bit, say like 1 16th of an inch away from each other. And that just helps reduce that bulk when you fold it in half here again. So next thing we're going to do is repeat that same thing on the opposite end. And to make sure my strap isn't getting twisted, I'm going to do this, pin them so they are pretty sides touching, meaning the seams that are folded into each other are facing out. And I'm just pinning it together and this just ensures that I'm not getting my strap all twisted anywhere. Just an extra step of security. So now I'm at the end and I know that they are right sides together. So I'm going to open both those folds up or both the fold, all the folds on both the handle the straps up, clip it together, and then again I'm going to sew that with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Same thing I did before. I'm going to press that seam open, but first I'll just trim these. So I've trimmed it so you can see it's trimmed. I'll open it up and I'll press these open, just finger pressing it. Then I'll press them by refolding or refold and press so that those edges there are all pressed again. Now this is where we're going to take it and we're going to turn this so the wrong sides are together and to do that you want to make sure that you're lining up your lining so your exterior is on top and your lining is on the bottom so you're doing this so here's my exterior and my lining and where they meet I'm just folding right at that line and I'm going to continue doing that all the way down until I get to the opposite end making sure that I'm tucking in those raw edges are going to the inside so the, the edges the side where the raw edges were folded into each other are touching each other. You can use some double-sided tape here. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape on this. And I always cut any of these long threads that are fraying off just because they do end up poking out later. So I usually cut those off. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape on my strap. I'm going to go down the whole length of the strap Create my little tab. And your tape doesn't have to be perfect. Just keep going down the entire length of the strap. to my hands and my nails more than the fabric. And I'm just going to keep going again until I get to the other end. 
But I'm also making sure my fabric stays folded in where I folded it to as I go along. Remove your paper backing from your double-sided tape. And then again, take your exterior and fold it over so that the lining and exterior are wrong sides touching. I didn't mean to go off camera a little bit there, but so lining and exterior are wrong sides touching. And you can use some clips too as you're going along here. So you want to line it up. And it's worth taking your time to get it all nicely lined up. Just be careful that your tape doesn't stick to the table like mine just did. just like that. And if a bit of your exterior folds over your lining over to this side, that's okay. Because we're going to be using one end anyways to clip over the slider hardware. So it's okay if it does that because you can use that end to go over your slider. So I'm just pressing this just to make sure it's in place. And again, even though you've used double-sided tape, if you want to use clips as well to hold everything in place, Feel free to do so, whatever is going to make this easier for you to sew and give you the finish that you want. Now that we have that all pressed together, we're going to sew these edges all the way around, so down one side, across the bottom, back up the other side and across, using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now if you want to avoid twisting of your strap, what you want to do is start at one end, stitch all the way down to the other side, so the other end. Then come back up here, again, start back up at the side you started at and go back down the other side. And that'll help prevent your, your straps from twisting, especially if you're using something like vinyl, cork, full leather, those sometimes tend to, to um, twist. Using a Teflon foot for those types of materials will help, or even a walking foot. When I'm using cotton, if I get a bit of twisting, what I do after is press my strap. So I'll give it a press and that helps get out the twisting. It's just what I do so I don't get super concerned when I'm sewing with quilting cotton. So change your stitch length to the stitch length you like to use when you're top stitching. And don't forget to back stitch at start and stop. want to clip your threads and there is your strap all top stitched 
you are ready to add your hardware now. And my strap sort of twisted a little bit. So I'm going to just give this a quick press and then I'll come back and we will continue on with making our strap. So I just gave it a press as I was mentioning if I get any twisting in my strap when I use cotton I just give it a press and then that gets rid of all the twisting. So the twisting is gone. So is that clip? There it is. Now we need our hardware to make the crossbody strap. So for that we need our swivel hooks and our slider. And I always like to prep my hardware and put it all in a little Ziploc baggie so I have it and I keep it all close to me. That way there, when I get to each step, I just grab the Ziploc bag and take it out. So first thing we're going to do is look at the ends of your strap and see what end you like the best looking one or not the best looking one the one that you're not as happy with say maybe your fabric goes over the side or the lining comes over too much you can hide that by using that side on the slider so both of mine are good so i'm going to slide my strap so there's my bar my middle bar is here if you have one that the middle bar is connected or doesn't move then this will be a little bit different for you but still the same so there's my bar my center bar. I'm going to slide my strap between the top of my slider and that center bar. So this is the top of the slider, this is the center bar. So I'm going to slide it between and then bring it back down over the center bar. And you'll use the measurement that's given in the pattern for the amount you slide it over the center bar. You can sew this in place or use a rivet. I'm going to use a rivet so I'm just going to clip this for now and then add the rivets after because I don't need to do that on camera. But what you do if you want to sew this is just sew across here, then you can make a little box and sew an X through it and that'll just give some extra security to your strap in that area. So now what you want to do is slide your slider on, uh, your swivel hook on. And what I do is I always place it so that the lining side or the wrong side, depending on how you're looking at this, is facing up and that's the side that you can see where you folded it over for your exterior side. So make sure it's lining side up. Make your swivel hook. And this is just what I do. Everybody has a different method, but this is just what I find works for me. And with the swivel hook facing my table, so this part of the hook here, the trigger hook, is against the table and the little D-ring is facing up. I slide it onto my strap just like that. Then I'm going to take the loose end of my strap and bring it up between the middle hook, the middle bar and the slider, bring it up through and then bring it back down over that middle bar. So the same thing as what we did when we first attached the first side. So it's just like that now. So you have your slider and your swivel hook. Then I'm going to add my second slider. So again, same thing, the lining side is facing up, trigger of the swivel hook down, and then bring it on and fold this over so that the lining sides are touching and you fold it over the amount that's given in the pattern and it's just like that. And now you have a strap that is all complete. And you can either sew this or rivet this. So I'm going to go add my rivets and I'll come back and we will continue on with making our bag. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've added rivets instead of sewing. So here are my rivets added to both ends of my strap. So if you have a rivet tool where you can add rivets, you can definitely go ahead and use rivets on your strap. Or you can sew it so that you don't have to use rivets. You can also use Chicago screws too. That works really well. So there's our strap, totally adjustable. And the thing I like about these adjustable straps is you can tighten it as tight as it goes and you can make this into a shoulder bag by tightening your strap and then you have a shoulder bag. And the person can decide how long they want the shoulder bag to be. So if they want it to be up closer or want it to be a little bit shorter or longer, I mean, they can go ahead and do that. So we're done with our strap for now. We're going to set this to the side. We're going to make our zipper overlay with the key minder attached. So for this, you need this overlay piece your swivel hook and a rivet. So first thing you're going to do is slide the swivel hook onto that key minder piece at the bottom here 
and then bring it up so that it looks like this. So you're going to be bringing it right sides, uh, wrong sides together. Then you're going to add a little rivet. And if you don't have rivets, you can actually just sew that. But what I recommend is sewing right where your seam allowance is going, or your stitching is going to be when we top stitch this to the bag. So if you don't have a rivet, you can still make this. You just have to stitch instead. But again, stitch right where your stitching will be when we top stitch this to the bag. Or use some double sided tape to hold it in place for now until we stitch this to the bag. The choice is really yours, just an extra option. I'm going to set this rivet. And then that's how it looks. We'll put this to the side and move on to the rest of the bag until we use this later. And we're going to move on with creating our front panel assembly. So for this, we need our zipper for the front zipper pocket. And as I mentioned previously, I've gone ahead and made sure everything was cut to length because I did read through the pattern. We will need a zipper pull for that. And I'm going to show you in this video how I put my zipper pull on. Now I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for adding zipper pulls to zipper tape and I'll link that below as well because you may need a little bit more detail, see it a bit more, so I will link that below. Then we need our zipper tabs. So you'll want to grab two exterior zipper tabs. So this is piece C. So two exterior and two of your lining. Now my lining for my front zipper pocket is different than my lining for the inside of my bag. So I'm just making sure I'm grabbing the correct zipper tabs. So I labeled my front zipper tape with what it is. So that way there I knew that that was the correct one as well. We need our front exterior, so one front exterior, and then you need two linings. So just like that. So I have my exterior and my two linings. So you'll notice my pieces are already cut in half, so I have my exterior cut in half and one of my linings cut in half. So you'll want to take this to your um, cutting mat or just use scissors and cut this in half and you can just fold it in half to find the center or what I did was because I marked my center marks I just lined up my ruler, used my rotary cutter, it gives a nice clean cut. So you'll want to do that. So cut these in half so you'll cut one of your exteriors in half and one of your linings in half. And another thing, I've attached my interfacing so I'm using fusible fleece for, or not fusible fleece, just fleece, this is sew-in, but I made it fusible by using a glue stick. So just this, just your washable glue stick. I applied some of it around the edges of my fleece and then with my iron, I went in and I pressed it to dry it so that it makes it so it's fusible and I didn't have to worry about basting it in place. And you can do that with foam or any other interfacing that is not fusible. So I fused one of my um, fusible, one of my fleeces, the one of my fleeces to my lining because that needs to have the fleece, the little bit of structure as well to the front of the bag. So that has the fleece attached. So I've gone ahead and cut these. Now, once you have those two cut, we're then going to start with our zipper. And I need to put my zipper pull on this zipper. And this is really great for featuring a custom zipper pull like this one so I'm using a cute little owl to match my owl fabric and I'll link to the the shop where I purchased this in the description below so it's from Vala Creative Designs and this is the matte rainbow finish so I used an owl because my fabric has an owl print. So to attach my zipper I'm going to put this onto my fork so this is my little handy zipper helper and the rounded edge of my zipper pull is facing up. So when I put it on, the flat edge goes into the fork first. And this was made by my husband. I painted it, but he put it all together for me. He made sure that the fork was all bent. You can see, and you'll see it in the little video, um, how it's all done. I really go into explaining it. So once I have the zipper pull on, I open the zipper tape just a little bit. Then I'm going to take the zipper tape and evenly place it inside the zipper pull and just pull it down. 
and I want to make sure that it comes through the bottom of the zipper evenly and that'll make sure that it's even all the way and you don't get one side that bulges out a bit more than the other you'll know that it's on right sometimes it takes a couple of times to get that to work properly sometimes it goes like it just did on the first try but you'll get used to it too once you do it a few times it gets a little bit easier it can be tricky the first time the nice thing about that zipper helper is it's there it's ready for me to use anytime i need it if you don't have that and you have a fork you can always use a clamp and clamp a fork to your table there's lots of options to use i used to hold it between my legs and do it before my husband made that because i didn't want to clamp a fork to my table and accidentally hit it um, so there's a couple of options for using your handy helper. You don't have to go and buy anything fancy. You can just make one. It's really quick, simple. I purchased the supplies for the wood block at Walmart and the fork came from the dollar store. So again, zipper, it's on, the pull is on the zipper tape. It looks like that. Now we're going to take our zipper tabs and we're going to take one of our exterior zipper tabs and we're going to place it so it is pretty sides touching against the right side of the zipper. And the right side of the zipper is the side that has your zipper pull on it. Clip it together. Then you're going to take the lining tab and you're going to place it so it is pretty sides against the wrong side of the zipper. So just like that and you want to you want to make sure everything is lined up nice and straight with this with the short edge so all short edges are nicely lined up and straight so just like that so what you have is a zipper sandwich and sometimes what I like to do is I like to baste my exterior first then I'll attach my lining if you want to do that go ahead and do that that just makes sure your lining or your exterior won't shift as you're sewing another thing if you've changed your stitch length when we top stitched our strap change it back to the length you use for sewing and now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Once we have that sewn in place, we'll press the tabs up away from the zipper so that they are wrong sides together. Just like that. And I like to put a clip on the end just to help hold it in place. Now we're going to top stitch this. my stitch length back and that's one side done so again for the other side same thing exterior pretty side against the pretty side of the zipper so the side with the teeth and then the lining pretty side against the wrong side of the zipper clip it together and then sew that with the seam allowance given in the pattern And then I'm going to press them so they are wrong sides together. And then I'm going to top stitch the zipper tab. And that is how your zipper will look once it is done. Now another thing you can do just as an extra step is you can baste these long edges together of your zipper tab if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just to make sure that that doesn't shift on me as I'm sewing. Make sure you clip all your threads though. You don't want any peekaboo threads later. They do come back out often when you're done sewing your bag. They like to be known that they're there. Now we need 
take some double sided tape and place it along the long edges of the zipper and I'm just going to give my zipper tabs a little bit more of a haircut just to get rid of most of the fraying. And the threads that I also didn't cut. So with my double sided tape, I'm going to place it down both the long edges of the zipper and of the tabs. And this will help keep your zipper perfectly straight when we're sewing it. So just move your zipper out of the way, or your zipper pull, sorry. Just like that. So now we need to make sure our zipper pull is facing up. I'm just going to move these out of the way. Is facing up when closed. So when you're closing it, it closes up towards the top. You want it to be at the top for this bag so that your zipper is up at the top when you wear the bag. So we're going to remove the paper backing from the left side of the zipper. Just making sure that it's stuck down because both sides are lifting off. Just like that. Now we're going to place the zipper right sides together with the left edge of your exterior. So when you lay them together, it's this left side here. So remove that side. And again, making sure my zipper pull stays up. So here's my zipper and here's the left edge. I'm just going to flip this over and then I'll line it all up. And what you can do too to make sure it's centered, another little tip, is fold your zipper in half and within the seam allowance mark the center line, the center of the zipper, and I do use a pencil, I just use it within the seam allowance, but use whatever marking tool you use for making your marks. And then I'm going to do this too for my one, my exteriors and my linings. I'll fold them in half and I'll just find the centers. So again, zipper pull is going towards the top when it's closed. Flip this over, line up my center marks. I need to just zip my zipper a little bit out of the way. and line up the edges so that everything's nice and straight. And you can go ahead and put some clips here to help hold it in place as well. But this just gets it nice and centered so that there's the same amount of zipper tab as there is on both ends, so at the top and the bottom. And don't worry about trimming it just yet. Leave that. We will trim it all off later. So there it is. It's attached. Now we're going to base this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And just be careful of where your zipper is, or your zipper pull, sorry. Move it out of the way so you don't hit it. And it also helps so that you don't get that bubble in your zipper. Now we're going to take our left side lining, so again, put them together. This is the left side, or not your left side, your right side, sorry, lining, and you're going to place them together. So you'll know it's the, same, the right side because when you flip this, they match up. So you want to make sure those darts and everything are matching up. And you can clip this in place, and you can use this 
With, uh, you can hold this in place using some double-sided tape again, or you can just pin it and sew. So line up the bottoms, and if you have a center mark on your lining panel, line up that as well. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm going to switch to a zipper foot because that was kind of close. Based, I don't use the full seam allowance I'll use a slightly smaller seam allowance and the reason for that is if I'm not accurate with this seam allowance I don't see my stitching after so it's just the little trick I use just to make sure you don't see any of those basting stitches but my lining when I sew that final side I do sew that with the full seam allowance and when I'm basting I, I often don't use my normal stitch length, I'll use my top stitching length as well for stitching it because I'm just basting it in place. What it's doing is just basting is just holding the fabric in place so that when you sew the other side, again, nothing shifts on you like I mentioned previously about um, the zipper tabs. So sewing all the way down that straight edge with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now we're going to press the fabric away from the zipper and you can take this to your iron and give it a press. I'm going to finger press. Another thing you can use is your seam roller. So you can just press out your seams with this. On my tool here that I've often used. Or your iron. Oops, I just dropped that. I won't be able to show you that again. So make sure everything is nicely pressed and then we're going to top stitch this. Once this is top stitched you'll repeat all the steps for the second side. So using your top stitch length top stitch all the way down and it'll look just like that. So now we're going to repeat that for the second side. So return your stitch length. Always make sure you return your stitch length back to the stitch length you use for your regular stitching. And this is not sticking. Remove the paper backing. First, I'm going to mark the center of my exterior. Place the center marks together. I'm just pressing this together. My tape isn't as sticky as I thought it would be. Could be because it's thinner, which is what I wanted. And that zipper pull is in the way as well. So then once you have this pressed, you'll baste it in place using that seam allowance given in the pattern. When you approach where that zipper pull is, don't forget to move it out of the way. Now take your lining and place it right sides together. 
So you're making a zipper sandwich, so it's going to be, the, the lining is going to be right sides together with the wrong side of the zipper, but also the right, the lining side of the zipper tabs. So you're making a zipper sandwich. Then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. zipper pull, moving it out of the way, press my fabric so that they are wrong sides together. again top stitch this same thing with the seam allowance given in the pattern now the ends here where the tabs stick out you can actually trim those tabs so that it's even with the panel just like that so I just had a little bit to trim off just like that and that's how it looks so far so when we reach in you're going to have your little pocket and I fussy cut my owl so that it would be in the center and the zipper zips up I don't, know, I don't know if it's easy to tell yeah it's easy to tell on camera how it looks and I just thought that the owl pole was really cute so now we need to take this and we need to take our remaining lining panel and we need to place this completed panel on top of that remaining lining panel. So you're going to want to line up all your center marks. So if you're not sure where the center is of this zipper tab, fold it in half and then that's your center. So it's marked. I can see it where I fold it. And I'm going to line it up with the center at the top. And I'm going to repeat that for the center at the bottom just to make sure everything is lined up nicely and neatly. Create a center mark. pin it in place and then pin the rest of the way around Pin everything together and once you have it all pinned together we're going to baste this together using the seam allowance that is given in the pattern and you want to make sure everything's nice and flat too Oops. So now I'm going to baste this, and for basting, I'm going to use a longer stitch length. And I'm even going up where those darts are, and I'm just pivoting and sewing up that straight edge of the dart as I get to it and then back down the other side. And I'm basting all the way around. And this is going to hold all these layers together. Turn my stitch length to my stitch length I use when sewing. Now we need to create these darts. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take where the dart is, 
and fold it so it is right sides together, just like that, and lining up these straight edges, and then clip it in place. So again, there's my exterior, fold it so it is right sides together, and clip it in place. Then we'll sew these using the seam allowance given in the pattern. My foam is getting stuck. I'm just going to trim my threads. And now I'm going to trim the seam allowance down. there we go we have our darts made and our front panel completed we can stick this to the side for now we're going to move on to the next step of making the bag now we're on rear panel assembly so we need our rear panels and that is these so you need these two pieces here these are pieces oops I'm on the wrong page of my pattern these are pieces 8.5 so there's two of them and you will also need a magnetic snap and you'll need one exterior as well. And the last exterior has your interfacing, if you've chosen to use interfacing, again minus fleece, attached. So I'm just going to put those two to the side for now. First thing we need to do is take the lining side of the pocket and find the center. Oh, sorry. You want to mark your centers if you haven't already. I was skipping ahead. You're going to take these and pin these together at the top, so the top straight edge, so they are pretty sides touching. Match up those center marks as well. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern and you're just sewing this straight edge, not sewing anything else. And if you've changed your stitch length to a stitch length for top stitching, do change that back to the stitch length you use for stitching your bag together. to flip them so they are wrong sides together but first what I like to do is press this seam open my seam roller fell on the floor so I can't use that and I'm going to line up my bottoms and I'm going to clip it just to make sure nothing shifts on me to top stitch across this straight edge here, this top straight edge, using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And you can take this to your iron and give it a press before you top stitch it. We're 
return your stitch length again. Just going to remove these clips. Now, this is where I was jumping ahead. On the lining side, you want to find the center and you want to make the mark for your magnetic snap. And there's a measurement given for how far down you're going to make that mark. I've already gone ahead and done that. So now we're going to install our male side of our magnetic snap onto the lining side. So you'll want to follow your manufacturer's instructions for installing your magnetic snap. I'll just quickly show you how I'm doing this for mine. So I use my washer to mark the slits for my prongs. And I also do that on a piece of interfacing. I just like using this little extra piece of Peltex. You can use Decaville Heavy, you can use foam. I just keep all my cutoffs from my interfacing when I cut them. And I always keep them because I use them for the backs of magnetic snaps or rivets or even for the backs of your hardware that says handmade or anything like that. Once I've cut those slits, I then add a bit of seam sealant, free stop, free check, to the slits. That just went right into my garbage. Then I push my magnetic snap through those slits that I made, add my interfacing. Now my interfacing is going up into that seam, so I'm going to trim this after I press my prongs down. And again, this is being attached to the lining side of your material. I'm looking for my scissors, those aren't them, my duckbill ones, and I'm just going to cut this interfacing so it is not in that seam allowance. And one more thing I like to do is add a piece of duct tape over the prongs. I find it helps hold the prongs, but it also helps prevent those prongs from rubbing and scratching and coming through to the other side over time. So just like that, that's how that looks so far. Now we need to take our remaining exterior piece and we're going to line up the bottom edges. So get everything all nicely lined up. And I fussy cut this pocket so that everything would line up when it was finished. So you can see it creates the full owl. So you see his ears up here or his horns. Everything's all lined up. Now we need to make the mark for where this magnetic snap is. And I know I used a pencil. I don't recommend using a pencil on the right side. I know my magnetic snap is going to cover that. I'm just going to make sure it's correct. Again, I don't recommend a pencil on the right side. Use a, oh, a pen that's safe for your fabrics. I normally don't do that. I also need to cut, and I know I used fleece, but I still add this even when I do foam, when there's foam back there, I still add the piece of interfacing behind. It just adds that extra security. stop I have a cart and now I'm kind of confused because I'm used to having everything on my table beside me to the left here but now with the cart being beside me everything's there so it kind of makes me a little bit confused 
because I'm not used to it yet. Again with the tape. Snap it together. And then clip your sides all the way around and the bottom. We're going to base this in place. clipping all the way around and then we're going to baste it all the way around and the basting is just going to hold this in place and I'm using a longer stitch length for basting Now we're going to do the same thing to create those darts. So fold it at the dart. So fold that V so it goes right sides together and it lines up, the straight edges line up and clip it in place. And we're going to fold and sew these darts the same way as we did for the front. So fold it just like this, right sides together. Those straight edges will line up, clip it in place and then sew it. Remember to return your stitch length as well, back to your stitching length you use. Again, trim the seam allowance. threads. And our exterior back is complete. That's how it looks. And I'm so happy I fussy cut because it all lines up nicely. I know it's hard to tell because the pocket and the snap being there, but it all lines up nicely and I love it. So this is done. We can set this to the side. We're going to move on now. For this next section, we are going to need one lining A and one pocket D piece, and we're going to create a slip pocket. So to do that, we need to take the pocket and fold it in half so that the short edges line up and it is pretty sides touching. Now we're going to sew the sides and the bottom with the seam allowance given in the pattern, but we are going to leave a small turning gap here in the bottom so that we can turn this right side out. And if you want, you can mark so that you know where to start and stop. So I'm going to sew this. If you've changed your stitch length, don't forget to put it back to your stitch length you used for sewing. 
And in the corners, I always like to back stitch a little bit just to add some extra strength for when I'm poking those corners out. Now, when I get to where I want to leave that hole for my turning gap, I stop, then I turn my fabric and I sew off the edge. And the reason for that is that helps get this turning gap, makes it cleaner when you do turn it under when we go to press it. So same thing on this side. My presser foot's falling off. Same thing on this side. I'm coming to where I want to leave that turning gap so I back stitch there extra strength and then I back stitch when I come off the edge of the fabric now we're going to trim our corners careful not to clip your stitches and another thing I like to do is just trim off the bulk just past the corner as well this also helps Turn those corners nicely. So now we're going to turn this right sides out. Poke out your corners being careful not to poke too hard. You don't want to break your stitches. Also run that along the seam that's sewn and then you'll see that this just naturally where you sewed off the edge it just naturally wants to fold under so I'm going to take this to my iron I'm going to give it a press we'll come back and we will attach this to our bag now that we have this press we need to top stitch the top edge and sometimes designers like us to top stitch the edge where the opening is I always top stitch the edge that was folded over I just like the look of that this gets closed off when we stitch this to our panel so you can follow what the designer says I'll see what Kristen says here so she does recommend you top stitch the folded edge as well so don't forget to change your stitch length to your top stitching length And back to your regular stitch length now we're going to fold this in half to find the center and we're going to fold our lining piece in half to find the center as well We're centering it right in the center of the panel so I'm just folding it all ways this is just a fast and easy way to get it centered so now that I have that centered hang on, watch out baby Go right here. now that I have that centered We'll use some pins and we're going to place this centered so make sure the top of your pockets at the top of your panel so we're going to line up those center creases we made or all those creases get it all centered and then pin it in place So now we're going to sew down the side across the bottom and back up the other side and when we're sewing across that bottom just make sure you ensure that this opening where you turned your pocket right side out stays together and lined up and don't forget to also back stitch at start and stop and I'm going to remove my top pin sorry buddy you can't be there just back up 
see here so that everybody can see what I'm doing. your threads. I'm going to move my clips so I don't accidentally knock them. I'm just going to move you here. Lay down. So now you can sew a pen slot here if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Sew from the bottom up. And you can make the line for that. So draw the line and then sew over it. I'm just eyeballing this. show you with a pen and that's how it looks with my pen just like that I can also maybe if it fits make this a little bit bigger I think this will be too tight but make it a little bit bigger and it's a nice pocket for an epi pen as well now we're going to make the darts as we did for our exterior panel so fold it so that V is folded so the fabric is right sides together and those straight edges on your V line up same thing as we did for the exterior. And then just sew them together. Trim those darts, so trim the seam allowance down. Just like that, and now that panel is complete. Moving on, we're going to create our zipper pocket with that key minder overlay that we created before. Our zipper pocket zipper our zipper pocket D piece and our lining A piece. So for this, we need to center this key minder on our panel. And there's a measurement down from the top that you're going to use for where to place it. So you want to center it and use that measurement. So I've added some double sided tape that's just going to help hold it in place. So center this and place it at that mark down from the top just like that. And now I'm going to switch to a Teflon foot so that I can stitch around the entire edge. any back stitching on this because it is a vinyl and I don't want to see the back stitching so what I'm going to do is pull long tails 
and I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to leave them and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch all the way around the outer edge and when I get back to where I started I'm going to to stop in the same hole I started in and then cut and leave long threads and pull them off to the back when I'm done. And it might be a little bit tricky coming around this edge where your key minder is or where the rivet I mean is. Just be cautious of that so you take your time going around it so you don't hit it. And when you go around the corners I like to with my needle down, lift my presser foot up, pivot a little bit, and then take a stitch, and then pivot again, and keep repeating that. So presser foot up, needle down, presser foot up, pivot it, presser foot back down, take a stitch, and do that all the way around all those corners. And that just helps me get those nice corners, those nice rounded corners. It's a little bit more time consuming that way, but I just find that when I go slower, it gives me a nicer, cleaner look that I like. So I'm coming back to where I started. So I'm going to be very careful here because the rivet is going to be right there. And I'm going to stop right where I started, lift it up, leave long tails, and all I do is give this a, a pull, the, the threads on the back, sorry I was trying to think of the word, threads on the back and that creates these loops which makes it easier to pull that thread up from the front. So it pulls it through just like that. Then I'm going to tie them together, so I'm going to knot them. away that's underneath this opening here so we need to get rid of that so I just start with my seam ripper and then I come in with my duckbill scissors and I'll cut down some more and then when I come on this side the duckbill scissors help prevent me from accidentally cutting that overlay and I'm just going to cut it away and this doesn't have to be super pretty because it's going to be covered up with your zipper and your zipper pocket no one's ever going to see this unless they take apart the bag of course just like that so now we have the opening cut away. So we're going to just stick this to the side for now. So moving on, we now need our zipper pocket D piece, the remaining one, and our zipper pocket zipper. If you do not have your zipper pull attached, please go ahead and do that now. We're going to also need some double sided tape, so I'm just going to get that out. So we'll need some double sided tape. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to place our zipper, place our zipper so it is right sides up against the right side of our zipper pocket. So the zipper pocket pretty side is facing up at you and the zipper is right side up. So the pretty side of the zipper, the zipper with the side with the pull and the zipper teeth are facing up. And we're going to place this along the top, short top edge, lining up those straight edges all the way across and pin it in place. Once we have this pinned in place we will go ahead and sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern and when you get close to where that zipper pull is 
and I know it's hard to see on my camera, but you get this little bump where the zipper pull is. When you get close to where that zipper pull is, just zip it out of the way. So zip it up towards where you've already sewn, just so that you don't have that little bump there. That'll help keep your zipper tape nice and flat. So go ahead and sew that with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And make sure your stitch length is at the length you like to use when you're sewing your bag together. And see, I'm at that zipper pull almost, so I'm just going to zip it out of the way. And if you're worried about you accidentally pulling your zipper off your zipper tape, what you can do is before we sew this zipper to the lining zipper pocket, what you could do is just backstitch over top of the teeth right at the end a couple of times and that'll help create a, a new stop where the zipper won't be able to come off. So there you have it. Now we need to press this. So you're going to press it so that it is wrong sides touching and you can take this to your iron and give it a press. I'm just going to finger press and then we're going to top stitch this and we're top stitching it to make it flat and I'm just moving my pull out of the way just so that I don't accidentally hit it because it is dangly. realized I'm sewing with my Teflon foot which I don't need to. So I'm going to switch out my presser foot. I'll have to switch back to that foot after but for now I can use my regular one. So then what we're going to do is take this piece that's not attached, this edge, that's not attached to the zipper and bring it up to the top edge of the zipper here that's not sewn to anything and you're just going to match it up and pin it in place and I like to do this from this side so that I can see that my sides of my pocket are lining up as well as at the top edge. Another little trick is mark your center points on your zipper and the center points on your zipper pocket and that way there you'll have everything nicely lined up as well. Again sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Make sure you're using your stitch length that you use to stitch your bags together. There's my zipper pull in the way again, so I'm just zipping it out of the way. Now this one's going to be tricky to top stitch so we're going to move on to the next step and then I'll show you how to top stitch that flat once we've moved to the next step. So the next step is to take your pocket and fold it in half so that the zipper is on top like this. So just like that you fold it in half and your zipper pull closes to the left so when you're closing it it closes this way. So you'll want to press it give it a little press. I'm just doing this with my hand. You don't need to take this to your iron. Just make sure that it's all nice and flat. And then we're going to take our scissors oops, and we're going to cut the bottom edge of this pocket. Again, make sure your pull is going to the left. And trim that pocket just like that. So now when you open it up you have two pieces of the pocket. And remember I was saying you needed to top stitch this side and we couldn't. Now we can because it's open. So just going to move my pull out of the way and I'm going to top stitch that edge again. And that's just going to help keep it flat which will help for the next step. And I'm just making sure my pull stays out of the way and my pull's a little bit tricky. There. 
And another thing I'm going to do, just to make sure I don't lose my zipper off my zipper tape, is I'm going to sew, as I mentioned previously, to close the end of my zipper. Just a couple times, back stitching back and forth on it, and that just creates a stop so the zipper doesn't slide, the zipper pull doesn't slide off your zipper tape. And I'm right at the edge. Trim all your threads. You don't want them peekabooing on you later. And there you go. Now we're going to put this inside this zipper pocket hole. But first, before we do that, we need to apply some zip, some double-sided tape to the edges of the zipper. Never find the ends here. Sometimes they're easy to find, sometimes they're not. So I'm going to put double-sided tape along the long edges of my zipper. And then we're going to remove the double-sided tape paper backing. Make sure it's stuck on. And we're going to place this centered in the zipper, oops, in the zipper pocket opening here of your zipper overlay. And I like try I like to try and center it. My finger is now stuck. It's pretty sticky tape. I like to try and center it. So by centering, not only centering the teeth within the zipper opening, but centering it in the center of my overlay so that when we stitch the sides, I have enough room on both sides that I don't have the end of the zipper right here so that it'll end up poking back out. So you want to make sure it's centered. Now another little tip is when we, before we sew this, I like to take this and pin this down. And then that piece that's down here, I'm going to use a pin and pin that nice and flat down here so that what happens is it doesn't end up under my stitching up here. It has happened to me before, so now I do this and it helps hold it down so that nothing moves up or comes down underneath while I'm stitching. So I'm going to switch back to my Teflon foot because we're going to stitch all the way around that opening. So remember when we first put in this overlay, we stitched on the outer edge here. Now we're going to stitch on the edge closest to the zipper teeth. So go ahead and sew that, and you can do the same thing as I mentioned previously, which is leave long tails, start stitching, don't back stitch, go all the way around. When you come back to where you started, stop in the same hole you started in, pull long tails, cut them, then you will pull our tails to the back and tie them off, and then you have no back stitching here showing at all. And be very careful because you do have that rivet there, so it's going to be awfully close. So just be very careful not to hit that rivet. I'm just sliding my zipper pull out of the way. Again, my zipper pull, I'm going to take it and slide it out of the way. My zipper pull is stuck right now. There we go. my last threads, my original thread tails, I don't want to hit them. I'm just making sure they were out of the way. Now I'm back to where I started. 
lift my needle up, go long tails, and then all I do, as I mentioned before, is I pull on the threads in the back, and that causes the loop for the front thread to come up, and it's really blending, so it's hard to see. There we go. And then repeat that for the second one. And then I'm just going to tie them together. And this is really handy too, the no back stitching, when you're doing your top stitching. If, say, you run out of bobbin thread on a strap, uh, you can remove a few of the stitches back, then pull them to the one side and tie them off. And you can even take a needle and slide it so it goes through the seam after, so you don't have, like, you tuck that um, knot. Instead, pull your needle, your threads through your seam of your strap. So say this is your strap here, and I know we're getting off topic, but I wanted to explain this. So you would take a needle and take those threads and fish them through so it comes out between the two seams here on your strap. So see how there's a the fold? Bring it through there, or if it's on the other side, do the same thing on the other side. Bring it through there, tie them off here, and then your knot is tucked between here instead. And then what I usually do is just an extra little step, take the thread and I fish it back through and I pull it back through, and then I cut it off so that the longer tail stays stuck as well inside there. Just a little extra tip for you because sometimes we do run out of bobbin thread or thread as we're sewing our straps. Of course, it's the wrong time to happen, but it does happen. And so that's an easy solution to fix that. So I'm just removing all my clips now. I no longer need them. Now what we're going to do is first, I'm going to make sure my zipper is open or at least partly open so that we can reach in later. Turn this over and we're going to sew our zipper pocket and I'm just removing the zipper tape that's on the ends here because I don't like sewing over it as much as possible. Just the tape itself sometimes gets stuck to my needle or not my needle, my presser foot. Alright, so now we're going to take these pieces and you know what I did? Look what I did. So this just goes to show even I make mistakes. I ended up twisting this around so now my zipper doesn't close to the left, my zipper closes to the right, which is usually how I like it because when I wear my bags I like my zipper to close to the right so it's just in my head to have my zipper close to the right. Now because of that, look what happened here. My lining pocket, the one side, is way longer than the other side. That's a little bit of a problem, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew down this side, sew down this side, and then I'll just trim this to length. So if you did that, you can do that. You'll have a little bit of a smaller pocket, but that's okay. You still have a functioning pocket and you can still fit things in here. However, the other option is to sew this, so pin this together, so baste this. After you pin it, you'll just baste stitch it, and then fold it, and then sew these edges, both these sides, and leave the opening here and you can reach through that instead. Which, you know what, I'll do that to show you. This is how I often fix it when I'm not filming because I've done this before. Again, I'm so used to wanting all my stuff to close to the right because when I wear the bag, my zipper pockets are usually on the back of my bags and I like them to close to the right, just like the top of my zipper. So what I do here is I fold these up, I'll pin this together so that it matches up and then I still have the same pocket. However, same size pocket. However, you can do what I said, which is just simple, easy, sew your sides, trim this piece off, and you're done. But if you want the pocket to stay the same size as it was originally supposed to be, or similar to size, take these. Then I'm going to baste stitch this, so use a long stitch length, and don't back stitch just yet. Just, you have long tails, so leave the long tails. There, so I've base stitched that. Now, I'm going to fold this back down. And you can press this seam however you want it. I've, I press it all different ways every time, but I do put a clip at that seam.
And now we're going to sew the sides. Return back to your stitch length you like to use to stitch your bag. And using the seam allowance, stitch that closed. That just your sides, we're leaving the bottom. We're going to remove those stitches, and if you're following the instructions, you're leaving the bottom open. Now the instructions are the same. We sew our sides. The instructions are the same if you follow the instructions. If you had followed the instructions and your zipper pull was to the left, you would have done all that. You would have brought the top of the pocket down to meet the bottom edge here, pinned your sides, and then just sewed your sides, not your bottom. But because I made a boo-boo, I had to do it a little bit differently, and that's what I'm showing you here. So now I'm just going to remove my threads that I did for the basting stitch so that I can have an open pocket. So remove all those threads. <clears throat> Sometimes it needs a little bit of help. Usually you can just pull them, but because I stitched over it, it's kind of holding it in place. There we go. And now I have that opening. So now this opening is for when we reach in and pull the bag right sides out. Now instead of it being right at the bottom of my pocket down here at this part, now instead it's up a little bit. And then when I go to close this, it's the same thing. I'll just pull it through and close it the same way I would close it if it was at the bottom of the bag. And I'll show you when I get to that. But if yours is done right, your opening will be right at the bottom, the very, very bottom of the pocket. And the nice thing about those basting stitches is I can see where I stitched previously and when I stitch this closed or stitched it together, I know where to stitch to make that all nice and even. So making sure my zipper is open so that we can access this here, that's what you need to do just for the end, make sure your zipper is open. Now we need to create our darts as we've done before, so fold the lining so that they are pretty sides touching and those straight edges line up. And then we will sew these darts with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Again, make sure your stitch length is at your stitch length you use for stitching. What's going on here? Hang on. For some reason, my top thread decided to come out more. I don't know why. Just re-thread this. Alright. So now I'm going to sew the other dart. to trim these darts just like we did previously. You can also use pinking shears for this part if you want. And there you go. You've gotten your darts all sewn into your bag. We're going to just put this to the side for a moment. So I just like to place my two linings together and my two exteriors together. Now we're going to start putting it together. So we need our exterior zipper, our zipper tabs, and our, so there's the two exterior, two lining, and our D-ring strap connectors. So first thing is you're going to fold these D-ring strap connectors. And to do that, what you need to do is fold the long edges in to meet the center. So you can draw a line here or you can just fold it in half first, press, 
then fold the long edges in to meet the center. What I did was drew a line, then I folded the long edges both in to meet the center just like that. And again, because I'm pressing this again in half another time, I didn't press them so that they were touching. I left a small gap between and then folded it in half again. So one more time, you can fold in half and press, which creates your mark for the center. Fold each long edge in to meet the center, just like that, and press, and then fold in half again, and then all your raw edges are enclosed. Now I'm going to top stitch these long edges just on the sides. And I'm going to switch to my presser foot, regular presser foot. I had to have that Teflon foot for sewing that overlay. So we're going to top stitch these. And you may be wondering why I'm sewing across that short edge, and it's just because I don't have to stop, break any threads, or lift any threads up, oops, lift my threads up or anything, I just can continue stitching. That's going to be in a seam, you're not going to see that stitching there, so that's okay. I just go around. So one edge ends up being sewn. So that's how they look. Now we need to find our hardware. So with your hardware that you've chosen, you're going to take it and slide this onto the D-ring just like that. And you'll do that for both strap connectors. So slide your D-ring. So here's your D-ring. Oops, sorry, they're very small. So slide your D-ring through and loop it on to the D-ring, the strap connector. So just like that. We're going to baste the short edges. This will just help hold everything in place. Repeat that for the second one. So now you have two strap connectors that look like this. Now we need to take our zipper tape, our top zipper tape, so I call it top because it's for the top of the bag. And we need to install our pull. So put your pull on if you haven't already. Then you're going to take one of your strap connectors and place it on the end of the zipper centered. So you'll center it to those zipper teeth. And there's a measurement that's given for how far off the zipper tape the strap tab needs to hang. So you can see here, I've got my zipper tape here and my strap ta tab hanging off the end. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So use that measurement given in the pattern and make sure your strap tab or strap connectors are centered. And I'm going to adjust when I get to my machine. just like that. Now I'm going to repeat that for the other side. And you'll notice that I first start by putting my needle into my material first. And the reason for that is I just find it helps prevent my fabric from shifting from where I've placed it. So I turn the hand wheel and put the needle down first. So it just sort of helps hold it. And there we go, it's now centered. 
and they're now attached. Now we need to add our zipper tabs and it's going to be the same thing we did previously when we attached the zipper tabs for, let me find it, the front panel, how you attached your tabs here. It's going to be the same thing. So we're going to place the exterior zipper tab right sides together with the zipper. And for this one, I am going to stitch it in place. So baste stitch it in place first. So I'm just attaching it. My exterior is going right sides together with my zipper and then I'm going to baste it in place. And I'm just doing this because I don't want this to shift on me when I go to sew my lining. So when I sew that lining on, I don't want anything shifting on me. And I am using longer stitch lengths here still. I haven't returned my stitch length back to the length I use for stitching. I will when I go to attach the lining tab to the zipper. And just be careful that you keep your hardware out of the way. You do not want to hit your hardware. I'm trying to cut those strings, those threads. Alright, so now we have the exteriors attached, I'm going to attach my linings. And it's the same thing, lining is going to go right sides against the wrong side of the zipper. So the pretty side of the lining is touching the wrong side of the zipper. Now we're going to sew this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. <clears throat> oh, I don't want to move that. Oops. And if you have to switch out or need to switch out to a different presser foot, please feel free to do so. Sometimes we need to. So if you have a zipper foot, which I'm going to because my presser foot is going is getting really close and it kind of shifts me off the seam allowance. there using that foot helped me get nice and close and get my seam allowance accurate. Sewing the second side, making sure everything's all lined up nice and neat. You can see my fabric. Now we're going to do the same thing we did with those zipper tabs when we sewed that front zipper pocket. We're going to press them so they are wrong sides together. And then we're going to top stitch that. So I'm going to switch back to my other foot. You can, I can use that other foot for top stitching, I just like this one a little bit more. So change your stitch length for your top stitching length. And don't forget to back stitch too at start and stop. Repeat that for the second side. Oops. Now 
the next step, I'm just going to trim my little hairs. So the next step is to baste these together. And I just like to do this. This is just an extra little step that's not in the pattern just yet. But I like to baste these edges together. And there is a reason for this. So I'm going to baste those long edges together. And I'll sew going up from the bottom to the top. And you can leave this at your top stitch line. Make sure your hardware doesn't get under your presser foot in any way. Repeat that for both sides. And I'll trim all my threads after too. No sense in stopping and doing it now. Just get them all done. So I'm just trimming all my threads now. The next step you have a couple of options here for what you're going to do, and I'm going to choose the second option I'm going to tell you. So for the zipper, you can trim the zipper tabs so that they come to a, an, a point, but there is an amount here at the bottom that you have to. So it doesn't come right to a point. There's a little gap here at the bottom. So you'll want to know what the measurement is and make that measurement in the center here and trim these so that they go to that point. However, I'm leaving mine like this and I can just draw my points. I'm not going to draw them because I know approximately where I need to start and stop and I don't want to go off camera. So I know where I need to start and stop here on my zipper tab. So I'm just going to veer is what I'm going to call when I'm sewing. So you can either trim or do as I did or as I'm doing, which is not trim. However, if you do trim, make sure you baste those edges that you've trimmed again. So rebaste them. And that's why I said sewing them together makes it easier when we're cutting, because now you've got the fabric together and it's not going to shift on you while you're cutting so you don't have one side longer than the other. So that's why I like to baste it. And then if you're keeping your zipper tabs like I am, then they're already basted. But once you cut that, make sure you go ahead and rebaste it or Draw the mark that you need for where you're going to cut and baste within that mark so that that holds your fabrics together when you trim them. So I'm leaving my fabrics like this. You can make the marks to sew along. And now we're going to find the center mark of our zipper. So to do that, I'm just going to fold this in half. And again, I use pencils only within my seam allowance use your fabric marking tool that you like to use. And I had tried to use this for a project before and I ended up not and that's why those marks are there if you can see them on camera. So I'm completely ignoring those again. They'll be within the seam allowance so they won't be seen later. So now we need to grab our pieces here and we need to apply some double-sided tape along the long edges of our zipper. Oops. So I'm going to apply some double-sided tape. If you don't have double-sided tape, you can always use a glue stick. You will want it to dry before you stitch. So what you can do is place the zipper where it's going to go and then use your glue stick to uh, your iron to dry it so that it dries in place and then you can go ahead and start stitching. So I'm placing, placing my double sided tape along the long edge of my zipper and down the tab. And you will want to use your zipper foot here for this next step when we're sewing. Because you have these D-rings here and you want to be very careful to avoid hitting them and being able to get around them as well. And it, it might look like it's tricky, but I already made one of these bags during testing 
and it looked a little bit trickier, but it really was uh, pretty easy to sew around. You just need to be really careful. You can hand crank if you need to, to get around that area. And on my previous one, I did trim my zipper tab. Oops, wrong place. I did trim my zipper tab. However, I thought for this one, I would leave it. It's also a personal preference. So next we need to grab our exterior front panel. So this one with the zipper pocket. And if you haven't already, mark your center points. I like to mark the top and the bottom before I start. And we're going to place our zipper right side down. So I know I like my zipper when I'm wearing it, and this is the front of my bag, so I already know that. I want my zipper when I'm wearing it to close here. I don't want it to be closing behind me. When I open it, I find it easier to close it on the side I wear it on. So I'm going to make my zipper pull close to the right. So just like I did for that zipper pocket. And because my tape broke here, I've got a little piece. Oh, shoot, stuck to my nails. Oh no. All right, so I'm going to line up the center mark on the zipper with the center mark on my panel. So there it is, it's all lined up. And then I'm going to continue placing it along the edge. all the way around, all the way down, and this is where we're going to need to veer this. So because I don't have zipper ta the tape here, I can peel that back and I'm now going to stick it to my panel. So I've peeled it off my zipper and I'm sticking it to my panel. And this is just going to help that zipper tape hold where I'm placing it. So once I get to where the tab is here, I'm veering it so that it has that space where we are sewing it. So now I'm going to make sure I'm sewing. And if you want, you can do what I'm doing here and just stitch where my exterior, so, or draw a line where my exterior is so I know where I'm sewing. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side. Now, if you don't want to remove the tape the way I did, you can find where this goes up to. So just like this, so I'm at the tab. I know this is where the tab starts. I can measure that and okay, I need to put a piece of tape just at that area. Mine peeled back off the material pretty easy. And it's still sticky enough that I can use it. So again, I'm going to make sure it goes because remember, we have to have that little amount here. It's not, a, not an actual full point. It doesn't come to a point. There's a gap between it, and I'm just going to trace, because I can feel it, where my exterior is, so I know where to sew. So that's going to be my sew, to know that from that line I made over is my seam allowance. So that's where I start measuring for my seam allowance, to keep going and to keep the measurement or the design of the pattern that Kristen gave. So we keep it and it looks exactly how she wanted it. If you've trimmed yours to a point, you don't need to do that. You're just simply going to line up all the edges with the edge of your panel, but that's how I'm doing it for this. So now we're going to stitch this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern, and I'm just going to look. Okay. And once we have this basted in place, and because it's a basting stitch, you can use a longer stitch length. But anyways, once we have this basted in place, for those of you that did what I did, which was left the tabs longer, you can trim those tabs right after we got this basted in place. And when I'm basting, I know the designers give the seam allowance to use. However, if it's going to be the same seam allowance that's used when you stitch the final side on. I like to use a smaller seam as I've mentioned previously, I believe I did in this, this video, I can't remember everything I said, but I like to leave, make a smaller seam allowance and then when I come and I stitch the final piece on, if I wasn't super accurate and my seam allowance kind of went off a little bit, you're not going to see it because it's going to be covered with the bigger seam allowance and I'm hoping that makes sense. So here I'm at this um, D-ring 
I'm just moving it out of the way so I don't hit it. Very important to do that. And now I'm following that line that I made just like that. And that's how I'm making it come to a point at that bottom. Now, remember what I was saying is if you trimmed, if you didn't trim your tabs, you can go ahead and do that now. Just like that. And then you can see your sides so that when we sew this now, when we're attaching our lining, when we're attaching our lining, we'll be able to see what the seam is and be able to come in with an accurate seam allowance. So I'm going to cut the threads, return my stitch length while I'm remembering. Now we need to place our lining on top and we're going to need some more double-sided tape. So we need some more double-sided tape on this side. And we do use a lot of double-sided tape, but it is really very helpful to hold everything in place. If you feel like you don't need it, definitely go ahead. When I made my other one, I didn't use it, but I like to use it for the tutorials because it really does hold everything in place, but it also helps show how to use it and how it looks. And you can still pin too, if you want. You can still add your clips to help hold it as well. You really don't want this to shift on you. So I have that stuck down, I think. No, I don't. It's not sticking. There we go. Now I'm going to take my lining panel, so the one with the slip pocket. You can use the one with the zipper pocket if you want, however there's a zipper pocket here so when you have an item in there the two pockets together might make it a bit really like bulky in the front. So I'm going to place the slip pocket piece there. So I'm going to line up the center marks. My nails are sticking too much. So lining up the center marks and I'm just sticking it all the way as I go to the panel, the panel to the zipper I mean. Following that curve all the way down. And again you can use clips if you want to help hold it in place. I will think I'll add a couple clips just to, you know, hold it, make sure it stays, oops on that side and then when I go to do the other side I'll do the same thing. So again with the other side stick it together all the way down There we go. I have it stuck. I use my clips. I've also used double-sided tape, but I like the clips because it'll help hold it in place as well in case the tape sometimes comes a little bit unsticky. And I've clipped one of my hairs into it. I thought I thought I saw a hair, but maybe I didn't. So now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Again, be careful when you get to where your tab is. So know where your D-ring is, that tab, so that you don't accidentally hit your D-ring and make sure you're sewing right up to that spot on your tab. So where the tab starts or stops. So my tabs stop right here. So make sure that's where you're starting or stopping is at that tab. And my D-ring, I can reach in through the bottom here and just make sure that D-ring is going to be out of the way when I approach it. Just moving it, and that's why this zipper foot is very helpful. So just go slow at that part so that you don't hit that D ring at all. And there's my zipper pull, so I'm going to lift my presser foot, zip my zipper pull out of the way. 
and it is a little bit tricky because you're inside and it's a curve, so it is a little bit trickier. And now I'm at the center point because I'm taking my time to really make sure I'm catching all the layers. Back at that other D-ring, shift it out of the way. And remember, you want to stop where the bottom of that zipper tab is. So what you can do is make a mark on the side that you're sewing on to show you where the zipper tab is, and that's where you know to stop. Make sure you follow the curve of the bag. Now, that's how it is looking. We're going to take this and turn it so that it is right sides out. Now you can trim that seam allowance if you want or snip some small V's. I don't always find it's very necessary, also because there's a zipper there. I don't trim where the zipper is, but you can just trim the fabric. I would avoid trimming the zipper. I have had zippers fray on me, so that's why I don't trim the zipper. So that's how it's looking so far. Now you see how this is coming to a point. You can see where my white is. This is coming to a point here. So that's all going to match up when I sew the, the next side and then when we sew the linings and exteriors together in the final construction. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to go press this side and then we're going to come back and continue on. Okay, so I've gone ahead and pressed this seam here so that it's nice and pressed. Now we're going to top stitch this seam. So you'll top stitch from the end of the zipper tab all the way to the other end of the zipper tab. And if you like to help hold your lining, add a couple clips. I just add a few and this will just help hold everything in place so this doesn't slip up, up here underneath or slip up so it doesn't bulge up like this underneath your material. And as you're sewing, just make sure, feel with your hands, and make sure it's staying nice and flat underneath that presser foot. So back stitch it, start and stop. I forgot, I'm increasing my stitch length to the stitch length I use for top stitching. And just take your time, keep checking to make sure that everything is nice and flat. And when you're sewing past your D-ring, just make sure you hold it out of the way so you don't hit it. And also make sure your zipper isn't under, the, the loose end of the zipper here isn't under your presser foot or underneath your fabric. Now this area might be a bit bulky, so just take your time. You may need to hand crank if, if your machine is struggling. It'll also depend on the materials you use as well. My zipper, I'm just going to zip it out of the way. There's that D-ring, so I'm just holding it down for now. And I'm just going to hold it with my finger out of the way. we have it. And there it is. We've top stitched the exterior front. Return your stitch length back to the length you use for stitching. I'm going to leave these clips on the bottom, but now I'm going to repeat everything we did for the front side with our back pieces. So we've already put the tape on the one side. And I didn't put my tape on the lining side yet. I just like to leave it until we do it because I don't want to stitch through that. So 
So again, using your center marks, just like we did on the exterior, line up those center marks. sticking to my hands. And the same thing we did on the other piece, on the other side, so the exterior, when we got to that point where our tabs were and we veered it in, we're going to do that same thing on this exterior piece. So I'm going to remove the tape when I get close to the tab. making sure my D-ring is out of the way. So remove the tape, or you can put new tape from the tab down on, on the exterior side, not on the tab side. It's sticking to my finger. So just right up to the tab. And then once I get it to the tab, I'm going to transfer that tape over to my exterior. And then I'm going to veer my fabric on the zipper tape. I need to add a bit more of this double-sided tape because it didn't go all the way down. Some of it ripped off because it stuck to my finger. So you're just angling it off from the zipper tab down. And remember, if you've cut yours, there's that bit of space at the bottom of the tab that you're going to be leaving. And this side isn't sticking as well as my first side did. So I'm kind of fighting with it. There is my zipper pull here. So I'm going to put a clip where my zipper pull is because it keeps coming undone there and just put a few clips here. But remember how I marked my other side with my pen where my exterior is? I'm going to go ahead and do that again so I know where I'm sewing because I can feel where my exterior is here. And that's my guideline for when I sew. And you don't need to do that if you've used or if you've trimmed your zipper tabs as per the instructions that Kristen had for the, the other method of doing your zipper tabs. My tape is curling on me because it keeps sticking to my nails really wants to stick to my nails today. <clears throat> Alright, so where the zipper tab is, that's where I'm going to start veering it off, the fabric. I'm putting a clip here. I always find the second side a little bit more tricky than the first side. Doesn't want to play as nice as the first side did. Because you do have more layers that you're working with, so things can shift around. So again, I'm going to mark where the exterior is here. And again, that's just my guide so I know where my seam allowance is going to be. Alright, and we're going to baste this in place. So I'm going to switch out to my zipper foot. Definitely want to use a zipper foot on this one. 
As I mentioned previously, there is that D-ring. You want to be very careful when you're sewing around and your zipper as well, your zipper pull. So starting at the base where the zipper tab is, that's where you want to start sewing. And use the seam allowance given in the pattern. I'm going to unzip my zipper here because when I get to this D-ring I can see it better on this side and then I like to sew with my zipper closed so once I get past this D-ring I'll, I'll zip my zipper back past it however I will need to open it up slightly after before I finish sewing the bag so in the next few steps so I'm just going to reach in and this is just my personal preference. I just like it when it's closed. I find I get a nicer zipper. But you do what you feel is best for you. And what you are most comfortable doing as well. And I'm approaching that D-ring. So just scooching it out of the way. And I'm going to do the same thing I did previously and I'm going to trim those tabs. Because now I can see where the tabs need to be trimmed and this way here I have an edge for when I'm sewing my lining to know where to sew because as I mentioned before when I'm basting I don't always use the seam allowance because I'm just basting and I like to make sure that any stitches that may get a little wonky do not show through to the other side of the bag now this zipper I'm going to move it up a bit I don't want it to be closed because I don't want it right against that um, d-ring that's here so make sure your zipper pocket is open I'm going to keep repeating that and I'll repeat it for the next few steps but just keep checking to make sure it's open this zipper is not so important at this moment and this is like the game of find where the end there it is of the tape is so applying my double-sided tape starting at the base of the zipper tab the first zipper tab and going all the way around to the other side, to the other end of the zipper tabs. So from one end all the way around. And I still have those clips holding those other pieces. I want that to stay there just to help hold those together. And we're going to repeat everything that we did for the lining on the other side that we've already finished. Line up our centers. Get it stuck together with your double-sided tape. And yes, I'll add a few clips again. These are new clips, so they're a little bit stiff right now. It makes it hard for me to open them. tape keeps sticking to my hands. So I'm going to use clips to make sure everything stays in place. And it's because you've got this lots of bulk, all the layers are here right now, that you may find this a little bit more challenging to stick together. But don't panic, you can do it. Just take your time pinning and clipping and adjusting too as you go along if you need to adjust anything anywhere. Alright, we 
here it's all stuck together so I'm just going to put a bunch of clips this is just really helping to make sure it's held together now remember those d-rings when we're sewing we want to be cautious of them including your zipper so when you get up to your zipper pull you want to be cautious of it and move it out of the way so you want to keep moving those all out of the way as you're sewing it's a lot to work with but just go really slow for this or as slow as you feel comfortable going and you can get it done so starting where I started previously with my stitching and I'm going to take out my extension table and the reason I'm going to use my extension table is because this will help hold the bag up for me so I'm not, it's not hanging off the side and it'll help me make sure I get that nice even seam allowance and stop and I'm just feeling for where that d-ring is so I'm aware of it when I'm coming to it and I believe it's right here I'm just going to move my presser foot out of the way there it is so I've turned it I have it facing up and I've turned the d-ring over towards this side so I can feel it there and I can just get around it with my zipper foot without even hitting it. Just make sure everything is flat as you're sewing. If it's helpful, use a stiletto. Make sure your zipper stays flat as you're sewing. ring and the zipper pull so I'm just going to fight with my zipper to get that zipper pull out of the way and I want to move the d-ring as well while I'm there and just when I have it out of the way I'll put my finger on it so I know where it is to turn this right sides out and the previous one I made during testing I made it out of vinyl and my vinyl had like a soft fleece backing so I didn't use any interfacing with it at all so depending on the materials you use if you've used an interfacing you might find this a little bit more difficult to turn it won't be impossible you'll be able to do it just take your time as you're turning it and I can see a little peekaboo thread here that I'm just going to snip So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to give it a really good press again and then I'm going to come back and we will top stitch this. I'll also change out my um, presser foot as well because I'll go back to my regular presser foot. But that's how it's looking so far. There's our bag so far, the front and the back. So I'm going to go do that and then we'll come back and we will top stitch and we will continue with finishing our bag. Okay, so I have pressed this and what I did was I turned my bag so it was lining sides out and I pressed from this side so put my iron in and pressed. I can't press on the lining side because of my vinyl, I will melt it. So I pressed from this side just to get it pressed nice and flat. Also for top stitching, because I don't have a free arm on my machine, I like to do this from the li lining side out with the exterior in. So what I do is stitch this because it's kind of hard due to the shape of the bag and it's not like a flat bag where we were just top stitching straight across. We're stitching a curve. So what I do is bring the bag in from behind the presser foot. Oh man. 
you know what? First, I'm going to check my bobbin. See how full my bobbin is. My bobbin's good. I'm going to pull up my threads just to make sure I've got nice long tails. Now I'm going to bring it in from the back of the presser foot. And the reason for this is it's easier to stitch this way. So I'm going in the bag right now. So if you look, here's my bag and I want to go into here down at the bottom where our zipper um, tab is. That's where I want to top stitch. So bringing the bag in from behind the presser foot and it's a little bit harder because again you are stitching inside but you can do it. Believe in yourself. I'm just trying to move my threads out of the way so they don't make a nest. And then make sure you're even with your other side's top stitching like where you started and stopped on that one. Start and stop on this side. So there it is. Now you're going to have the D-rings and the zipper pull to make sure you don't hit. So same thing, you want to make sure your lining is nice and flat. Increase my stitch length. I, I know I didn't yet, but I did, just there. Now remember there's that pocket here, so you want everything flat, as flat as you can get it. And I'm holding this D-ring, and I know it's hard to see, but there's my finger here holding this D-ring out of the way. Once I'm far enough from the D-ring, I just move my finger, and I just keep flattening with my thumb underneath. And that's also why I go a little bit slower. Just because I don't want to hit my thumb either or anything else. And this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky because now we're coming towards the bag here. So you're going to have to pull this bag down like this to see what you're doing on this side here. I believe in you. You can do this. There's that pull and the tab. They're both in the same spot at this current moment. Make sure everything's flat underneath. And I'm checking here too. So everything's flat underneath. That's where that pocket was, or is, the top of the pocket is. I'm going to let go of the tab now so I can focus on holding all my fabrics away. And this other zipper here on this side, I'm going to zip that right open or right down so the pole's not dangling in my way. And I'm coming up to where I stopped on the exterior and I just want to have it stop at the same place for this side so it matches. If it's off by a little bit, I mean, no one's going to take a ruler and look. It might not even be super noticeable either. I wouldn't worry too much. Clip my threads. Clip my threads again. to turn this so it is exterior sides out. And there you can see, I'm going to move my table here so I can, and there you can see it's all top stitched on both sides, just like that. And you can see here on the side how it comes to a V here. That's what you want when you're sewing this. You want it to come to a V on the side there. So now we need to close this part of the bag up. So we're going to take these clips off. 
Make sure your top zipper is open. This zipper is okay to be closed. And again, make sure your zipper pocket zipper is still open. So what we're going to do is turn it so that it is, you see the interfacing side. So tuck your exterior in. So what I do is tuck my exterior in and down, just like that. Roll my lining out of the way, because you don't want to sew your lining. Match up my center points. Match up my darts, so those dart seams. And you want to nest your seams, so you can either open them up, the seams, or have one going one way and one seam going another, which is what I'm doing. So one going to the left, one going to the right. And we're going to clip all the way up to that tab. Now, when we sew this, you don't want to start at the tab side and go all the way around. What you want to do is start at your center, back stitch, stitch all the way up to this side. Come back down, restart down here, and stitch all the way back up to this side. It's easier to do that to come up over through the bulk than to start at the bulk. It's much easier to sew it this way. So that's what we're going to do. And you can just kind of pull everything out of your way. I'm going to use my extension tape again because it pulled everything for me as I'm sewing. But make sure your center points are lined up because that'll be really important right now. And you're going to sew this with the seam allowance that's given in the pattern. And make sure you're not at your top stitching stitch length. You want to have it at your stitch length you use for sewing a bag together. So one seam is one way at my dart, the other is the other way. Just placing a clip to hold my lining up at the top here. And you can see I'm coming up to where that tab is, so I'm just stopping there and backstitching. And yeah, I backstitch a lot. I'm always worried about seams coming undone, and I can just check and I can see. And you can check and see by turning it right sides out and see. Like just kind of give it a turn and see how your seam looks and if you're happy with it. Then you can go back. If you find you didn't come up far enough, go over and come back and stitch over that. So what you would do is starting down here, back stitch and come back up and stitch up a little further if you need to. However, I'm happy with mine. It looks like it's good and closed. So now we're going to repeat that for the second side. Lyings again out of the way to the bag. You may find the linings will be a little bit easier because it seems like it's not as bulky as trying to deal with the exterior. And pull that up out of the way. Make sure your zipper pocket is not in the way. check that side beautiful so both my sides look good I've come up far enough that it closes all the gaps that are here and there's another peekaboo thread I'm going to cut that now as I see that because I will probably forget if I wait to do it later so I'm just gonna trim that now there we go now that won't bother me so mine have come up as far as I would like them to go now we're going to repeat that for the lining. So we're going to push the exterior back down into itself so that our lining sticks out. And it's going to be easier in terms of you're not dealing with the bulk, but you will still feel like it's a bit wonky because of the way the bag goes inside. It seems like it's a bit of a mess, but just trust the process, it does work. And for the lining, so as I'm matching up my center seams and my, my starts before we continue. So for the lining though, we need to leave an opening in the bottom here 
for turning the bag right sides out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it right sides out to the bottom. Then we're going to close up that opening in the lining by pulling it through that pocket opening we left. And hopefully you did your pocket correctly and not the way I accidentally did mine. But if you did, it'll still work. So I'm just pushing my exterior out of the way so I can sew my lining. So starting at the bottom, and again, it's going to feel a bit wonky. Don't let that scare you. Sewing this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And leaving that opening too at the bottom. So I start just past or just before my darts. And as you can see, I'm maneuvering my bag around so I can get this nice and flat. Don't be afraid to twist and turn it and pull on it and move it around. I mean, don't pull too hard because you don't want to pull your needle out of your machine. But don't be afraid to, you know, kind of maneuver it around. And my foot's stuck here. So now on to the other side. So I'm just starting just before that dart. Make sure that pocket is out of the way so you don't hit it as well. And my presser foot always gets stuck here, so I just lift it up so it gets over the bulk. Oops. Ow. So my lining is complete. I've sewn it up to the sides, and I know it's a bit hard to see, but I've sewn it up to where those darts are. Just going to make sure this side looks like I need to sew a little bit more. So I'm going to try and get this under my presser foot. And again, I'm just back stitching on top of the previous stitches. And I'm just going to maneuver my bag so that there's not so much bulk here and that I can get up closer. And this is the part where my presser foot gets stuck under the fabric. There we go. Alright, so now we're going to find that opening and turn our bags right sides out. And I may have left an opening a wee bit too small, but I'm going to make it work and probably regret it for my hands. And I try not to pull my bags when I'm birthing them. I try to just push them out. And the reason why I try not to pull too much, like I'll hold it and I'll push out. Um, but the reason is because I have found that sometimes that can cause things to tear, like you can rip it. So pushing just seems to be a little bit more gentle. peeking out there. Ow. So this part when it's out, I, I'll pull on it to bring it out, but I try not to when I'm doing the whole 
birthing process. So now I'm just reaching my hand through the opening and I'm pushing out my base of my bag. And you can already see it's taking its shape. Like how cute is this so far? So cute, eh? I absolutely love it. Now if you really wanted to, you could cut the bulk out of those seams before you birth this. That's really your choice. I left it because I find it adds a little bit of structure in those corners there where, where it is. I find it just adds that little bit of structure. how my bag looks so far after you give it a nice press it'll look really nice so now we're going to reach in so I'm just gonna fold this out of the way so you need to reach in through the pocket so here's the pocket and pull out the bottom of the bag where we left that opening so just pull it out through the pocket opening And now we're going to clip this, so line up those marks again, all the center mark, and then clip it all the way across. Oops. Just like that. Mm. Yeah, I need my extension table. Oops. We'll sew that closed. Just make sure you don't stitch over anything you're not supposed to. You just want to stitch your lining to the bottom of the bag. All the way across. I'm not concerned about cutting my threads anymore because it's in the bottom of the bag. Where did that go? So with the zipper pocket still out, you're going to turn your opening under and as Kristen mentions in the bag, this just gives it a really nice press at the bottom of your bag and you don't have an opening or a seam line down there. People don't really look at the bottoms of pockets as much as they see in the bottom of the bags and even in the bottom of your bag, people don't really see that as much as they see. Um, as much as they see the exterior. So I'm just folding this so I can get a nice folded edge because remember I did my pocket a little bit different so I'm just folding those edges together so that I can stitch them exactly the way it's stitched inside and if you recall we base stitched this so I can actually see the base stitching holes they're just ever so slight, but I can see them. So I'm pinning it all the way across. So instead of my seam being at the bottom of my pocket, I'll put it at the uh, back of my pocket, just up a little bit from the bottom, and that's okay. But if you're doing this and you did your pocket where your zipper went to the left, your pocket will be even on the bottom and you'll just press that seam under and stitch it closed. The same thing I'm doing, it's just in a different spot. going to push my pocket back into itself, making sure I'm pushing in the corners. Zip the pocket closed. I will be pressing this to give it a nice finish and also help box the corners a little bit better, but I will be pressing this to give it a really nice finished look. 
clip my strap on. And there we go. Our scoville is finished. You can add, if you'd like, some rivets here. So you would go through the lining and the exterior and add a rivet right here to where your tab is. I would add it so it goes through the, the exterior tab and the lining. I may go back and do that. I haven't decided yet. I may go back and add that. I'll press my bag and then I'll decide. So you can add that there so you have some rivets there if you want, just for some extra decorative purposes. So there it is. Our school is done. We've installed this handy front pocket here. Our zipper pocket and slip pocket inside. And if you've chosen to do the zipper pocket without the overlay, it'll look a little, little bit different and it'll just be all your fabric. And then we have our slip pocket with magnetic snap on the back. Now you're ready to take this out and show it off to the world. But before you do, don't forget to take some pictures and share them on social media so we can all admire your Squilva bag together. And don't forget to post it in the KMG Bag Makers group on Facebook. And also use the hashtags that are given in the pattern so that we can find your Squilva bags much easier and I'll be able to comment and love your bag with you. I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up a few tips and tricks in, along the way. Thanks for sewing with me. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.